Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a sleek brushed metal background using nothing but Photoshop's built-in filters and adjustment layers. You can download the project files to see how everything was put together and have files to work with if you don't have any of your own. Let's get started. So the first thing that you want to do is to create a new document and ours is 1280 by 720. Next you'll want to go and change the foreground color to a medium gray. We're using the hex code of all sixes and hit OK. And then we'll use the paint bucket tool and fill in our background with that gray color. Next we're going to click filter, noise, add noise, and we're going to leave it at 100% and make sure that you have Gaussian selected and monochromatic checked. Then we'll go and click filter, blur, radial blur, and you want to set the amount to about 50 and leave the blur method set to spin. And then you want to make sure that your quality is set to best and hit OK. Next I'm going to double click on my background to unlock it and it's going to ask me to choose a name. I'm just going to leave it as layer 0 and hit OK. Then I'm going to double click that layer in the layers palette to open the layer style dialog. The first thing that I'm going to add is an inner glow. I'm going to change the blend mode from normal to linear burn and change the opacity from 100% down to about 20%. Then I'm going to increase the size to 150 pixels and increase the range from 50% to about 75%. That way my inner glow has a little more rounded edges. Next I'm going to give it a gradient overlay and this is the key to creating our brushed metal effect. I'm going to come up here and choose a gradient that I've already created and then I'm going to set the gradient style to angle. So if I click on my gradient so we can see it in the gradient editor You'll notice that I have light gray, dark gray alternating through my gradient. These colors don't have to be exact. You'll just want to use something close to white and then a dark gray in between each white color. The one thing that you want to watch out for is that the two end colors are the same. So you can see that mine are a little different and if you look on our image you can see a seam where they come together. So I'm going to change this stop to a white color. And this one at the right side is already white, so now you can see that it seamlessly repeats around my gradient. So once I have my gradient set, I'm going to change the blend mode from normal to overlay, and take the opacity down to about 75%. Now you'll want to click and drag in your image to match up the middle of your gradient with the middle of your radial blur. Once that's done, just click OK. Next, I'm going to come down here and create a new solid color fill layer. And for the color I'm going to choose a nice light blue. Then I'm going to change the blend mode from normal to color. And that's going to tint our brushed metal with a nice blue color. Next I'm going to come into my adjustments palette and create a new curves adjustment layer. And I'm going to give it a strong S curve to darken the darks and brighten the brights to give our image a little more contrast. Then I'm going to add a levels adjustment and bring the black slider up to make the darks a little bit darker and bring the white slider down to make the brightest parts slightly brighter. Now if I go back onto my main layer and then press B to choose the brush tool, I'm going to zoom in here because in the middle you can see it's not exactly brushed metal. It has a kind of weird texture to the middle. So I'm going to come over and make sure I'm using that same gray color that our background originally was. And then I'm going to change my brush opacity to about 10%. Now I'll shrink my brush down till it's just about 100 pixels. And then I'm going to start clicking over and over and painting. And every few clicks I'm going to shrink my brush size and continue clicking and painting. And what that helps me do is just kind of fade out that weird texture that was right in the middle of our image. Lastly, I'm going to create one more curves adjustment layer and move that to the top in my layers palette. And I'm going to bring that curve down to the right to darken my overall image. Then in the layer mask for my curves adjustment layer I'm going to paint with a big brush using black and I want to make sure I set my opacity back up to 100% and I'm going to paint black on that mask to mask out that curve adjustment layer in the middle of my image. And once I do that if I turn it on and off you can see that that curves adjustment layer just adds a nice subtle vignette effect. Since everything uses adjustment layers, you can go back in and tweak things like the color and contrast without having to redo any of the other steps. I'm John Shaver for Photoshop Video Academy. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.